Welcome to episode 38 of Tim Talk, the podcast about the DC anime universe co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And uh, this week we're talking some Poison Ivy, and we're talking... Some frat assholes. Some frat assholes, yes. Uh, but before we get into all that, Cameron, what's happening in the world of comic movie news? Uh, big news. We had some major DC news this week. Fucking hell, right? <laughs> oh, I, it's, it's such an awkward situation, because you want to be excited, but it's yeah. such a horrible thing yeah. to kind of be ex- so if you haven't seen the news um zach snyder has left justice league because uh his daughter unfortunately um passed away a few months ago yeah so he's spending time with March. his family yeah um but because of that our 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 king of our king of nerds joss whedon himself is coming in to take the helm of justice league yeah in the next like three months of production yeah so like because there's my god there's there's so much to unpack there i mean i I think first and foremost like obviously i have a huge critic of Zack snyder to the point where that's basically like a bit that i more or less do and within that it's of course easy to forget that you know we get so caught up on the movies themselves and as fans and the things maybe we, we oftentimes don't like about them but like these are still the passion projects of people and yeah it's like a really terrible terrible situation and obviously like that it really sucks. Like no one should have to go through what he's having to go through, and it uh, it is really sad. And it's also it's a weird situation too because I don't really know how much of a difference it's going to make. Right, because he's he's coming in so late. Yeah, and especially given the circumstance, like it's not it's not a a shakeup of the project. I mean, it's someone jumping in to shepherd it through the end, which is basically all post production. So I think there's gonna be maybe some reshoots, but I feel like at this point it's going to be maybe some reshoots maybe some input on the edit but i think a lot of it's probably just me approving maybe less gritty I, the thing is i don't think that'll happen right i mean because it's so far down the line i mean like the the tone the tone's been well set. i just mean like actual grit actual grit on, like, the, on the lens yeah because that's all post yeah so i maybe we'll actually see a sun i maybe <laughs> i i feel like especially given the circumstance joss whedon's probably gonna do his best to just stick to the <clears> vision <throat> laid out Right. It's more just weird because we're in a world now where Joss Whedon has his hands, like he's in some capacity directed both the Avengers and Justice League. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I this to me, this does not mean that all of a sudden Justice League is going to be like the Avengers. Uh, furthest thing from that, I think at this point it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the closest thing we can kind of compare it to is the Ant Man thing, but that that's still. That director change was halfway through production, not... No, I mean, before... Well, it was was during pre-production. Like, they didn't film anything when they changed over. Oh, I thought... Okay. It's been a couple years. Yeah, they hadn't rolled yet. No, I mean, this this is an unprecedented situation, um, because it's obviously, like, a really fucked up, crazy situation. So, um, it's... No, I don't know. I wouldn't really classify it as... I don't think it, it just is what it is. Like, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. Right. But it also really, really sucks. So, um, but there was one other small bit of DCEU news as well, which is... Oh, that, was what you posted this morning? Uh, that I haven't got a no, chance to look at yet? that. There's the other thing. No, this is that uh, Doug Lyman's no longer directing the Justice League Dark movie. Okay. Yeah. So, another director drop? Yeah, another director drop. How I'm, many is that now? I, that movie... I'm, Either that movie or the whole universe, I couldn't even tell you at this point. I always thought he was a weird choice for the material. I mean, this was a project that got started by Guillermo del Toro, mm-hmm. and I, I like Doug Lyman a lot. Did you see um, Edge of Tomorrow? I did. I love Edge of Tomorrow. It's an amazing movie. Yeah. And, and he's fucking awesome as well. I mean, he did The Born Identity way back in the day, the first Born movie. Oh, and wow. Like, he, he's great. It just, this felt like a weird combination of material mm-hmm. and director, but he's off now, so who knows what's going to come in. Or who's going to come in in his place? But no, what, what you just referenced was the the trailer for Harley and Ivy. Yeah, which I watched. It looks really fun. I haven't watched it yet because yeah. I'm bad at podcasting. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, My friend sent it to me and like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, I should put this on our podcast. <laughs> so, uh, I sorry, going back one step. I yeah. do, I do want to ask you: Do you think Joss will have? Because obviously mm. he can't have big input on Justice League. Yeah. Do you think him and Jeff Johns will have a bigger input on the on newer films? Since everything is still getting reset and nothing is really done yet, it's possible. I would really like to see that because yeah. we obviously know that he knows how to work the cinematic universe. 
yeah uh joss we or not joss, um jeff johns you know knows how to work the universe in the comic form and if you put these two together i really think that the powerhouse i think i'm it, curious how much input he's gonna have for upcoming stuff i think it could be it's hard to tell because it's hard to tell how their whole system is structured like we know over at marvel kevin feige is running the whole ship um but within that all of the creatives, the writers, directors, and producers kind of have this this pool that they all put input into and get energy out of and like mm-hmm. exchanges back and forth. I mean, we've seen stuff about how James Gunn got advice from Joss Whedon to make his original Guardians more of a James Gunn movie. So like, there's all this back and forth. It's hard to tell how much that then exists within the Warner Brothers unit because I think Jeff Johns is now the sort of Kevin Feige. Yeah. Um. And I would imagine that they all have some input. I mean, James Wan, they're filming Aquaman now. So I think he's the only director, other than Zack Snyder, to have started on the project and made it all the way through. So I'd imagine that he's had a lot of input with Justice League in terms of uh, what all the Aquaman stuff is. Yeah. So it's possible. I I mean, I think they would be smart to get input from Joss Whedon. Yeah. (laughs) It always is a good idea. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're... We're already seeing the potential for a bit of a shift here. We talked about last time, good reports coming out about Wonder Woman. Average or, reports. Or at least better than everything else. Yeah. Not hard not to neg- We're, we're going to say not negative. Not reporting. negative. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I hope so. I hope he has a little more input. Um, I, I would think, given everything that's happened, that we just might see less involvement from Zack Snyder at this point. Mm-hmm. I think even on some level, and this is like pure speculation, but I imagine after this, working on anything DC would be really, really hard because that'll always be connected with the loss of his daughter. Like, how do you right. go back to work on something and not have that attached to it? Um, well, I mean, it's it it's two different worlds. It's it's a yeah. Oh. It's kind of a dark topic for this podcast. No, it is. It is but, like, we we'd sometimes talk real shit. What am I talking about? We've never talked about real never shit. We've never talked about real never shit. Never talked. I, I don't know. Like, I having had similar experiences, not with death, per se, but with, like, really traumatic shit, it's hard to separate what else is going on in your life from that same moment. Mm-hmm. So, I I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll just he'll be, maybe sit down a little bit from this point on. I don't know. But I just feel really bad for him. Cause yeah. Because he has to then go and do, like, a press junket at some point. For all this stuff. And it's like, I don't know. That's just... Right. Yeah. Sad things. Mm-hmm. Maybe... Well, I would say maybe happier things. And then the other bit of news I had was a, a personally sad thing for me was that Roger Moore died. Oh, I this saw. Week. That's really sad. Yeah. He... I would not say he's my favorite of the Bonds. I think he gets one movie that's actually good, <laughs> which is The Spy Who Loved Me. But of all the actors, I always thought he was kind of the most interesting, the coolest, and I respected him the most. Because he was like very charming and very self-deprecating and actually used his fame to do something better for the world. Um, unlike Sean Connery, who just sits cantankerously in his mansion in the Bahamas. He's, he's done good for the world by giving us more Sean Connery. I guess so. He is his own gift to the world. But he's taken that gift from us for 13-something years. I mean, just watch Highlander 2. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, what was, what was the, the subtitle for the that? Quickening. The Quickening. Highlander 2, The you. Quickening. Yeah. God, oh, that God. Yeah, that... Masterpiece. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. But, yeah. So, I mean, that was... I don't know. That was sad for me. I, I always had a lot of respect for Roger Moore. He's one of the Bonds, like, I, I always really wanted to meet at some point. I never... Obviously, never got to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that was that was kind of sad. Do we have, a, like, a little bit of happy news? We can I mean, I have, I, have, I have kind of funny-ish news. Okay, let's do that. That would uh, be a nice change So, we space. always know Wonder Woman comes out... This week, as as when we as when this podcast uh, comes out, no, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, D- don't ask me to do math. <laughs> um, and Alamo Draft House is doing a special. I don't know which select draft houses are doing this, but they're doing a special showing of just uh, women. Oh, I saw and that. that. Identify as women can That's go to these shows. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yes. The internet doesn't think so. Well, because the internet's full of assholes. Of course. There was a huge, like, Twitter battle going on between, you know, all these people saying that if you know, this was an all men's event, it'd be, you know, it would never get... I mean, just just let it happen. <sighs> like, it's... Wonder Woman kind of needs the help right now, especially after their amazing 
sponsorship, which I think we talked about last week, but I'm going to keep bringing it oh, up. The fit thin bars, yeah, whatever. God, the I think know. thin bars. Jesus Christ. Uh, I, just let them do. I mean, it's it's a cool and uh, all the money that they're that they make in these women only screenings is going to charity, which is awesome. So it, people, calm the fuck down. It's an awesome idea. It's a fantastic thing. That's great. Yeah. I'm perfectly happy that there are some screenings one of them I can't go to because that's just an awesome fucking thing. Yeah. And the the title says, like, women and then people who identify as women. Yeah. And so a lot of the jokes on the internet are like, I'll just say that I think that I'm a woman and buy a ticket. I'm like, just mm. go somewhere else. Go to a different time. You don't need to see it at 7 on Friday. I don't know if that's the actual time. Who knows? Yeah, but oh, God. it's like, there's other... Just calm down, people. Oh, this is... <laughs> making me so mad i know i mean the internet does that i know uh it's like the fucking people who think they need a straight pride parade but anyway <laughs> when's men's appreciation month oh god damn it i know oh. guess what guys we don't need a white history month that's every <laughs> month okay now that we're done with our yeah, political conversations uh, let's talk about batman now that we're done talking about really sad things and do you have any other news? that's all that I, no I no know. i had some stupid news about the spider-man universe but it's not worth talking about did you <laughs> there was a poster I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards we can put it up on the on the uh webs on our facebook mm-hmm. but someone remade the spider-man poster but photoshopped robert downey jr's face on every single person oh my god that's and amazing it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah we got to post that yeah <laughs> gotta see that Okay, but yeah, I suppose we should actually talk about Batman. Yeah, let's get let's get to it at this point. Uh, so we got House and Garden, which mm-hmm. is another uh, solo Poison Ivy episode, um, which is pr- I really enjoyed it. Did you like I, it? I did too. Yeah, because it it doesn't go where you think it's going to go. Actually, because um, it you think it's going to be I think the ver- like her version of a sympathy episode, right. kind of, and it kind of is. But oh, does it go weird places? Oh, it's so. I mean, it's not seal. It's not seal boy weird, but it's still pretty weird. I'd say it's not as weird, but it's more fucked up. Oh, it's very, it's very fucked up. Yeah, I'd say the most fucked up episode uh, we've had. I do want to throw this in really quick because yeah. we we throw around the word red herring all the time, and I finally learned the origins of it. <gasps> what? Because you did? I had way too much time on my hands one day. Uh, so back when people would train dogs for hunting, mm-hmm. red herring has a very strong scent. Uh, if you, they basically, it's a fish, right? Is yeah. It a hair? Okay, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a fish that, uh, you basically back then they were, I don't remember what years this was, mm-hmm. uh, but or what century they would, uh, you know, kind of plunge it in salt and then let it hang for like four or five days. Okay. And it had this horrible, horrible smell. One would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, you know, it's fish that yeah. you're leaving out in the Rotting open for fish four in the days. Sun. <laughs> uh, but because it had such a strong smell when they would train these dogs, they would make it focus on one scent. So it'd give it the scent of, you know, a squirrel or a deer or something. And as the dog was running, they would rub red herring across the path to give it a second scent to see oh, if the dog would follow the what? herring or the rabbit. Yeah. And if they followed the rabbit and they were ready to go hunting. And if not, they'd have to do it again. So that's why it's always the like. That is awesome. Yeah. How'd you find that? Uh, there's a, a weird YouTube channel that I follow called Today I Found Out, mm-hmm. and they just do, like, the most random videos, and it was one of those. That's so amazing. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to put that in the plugs. Yeah. I think, too. Yeah, it's a cool little channel. They're, like, he, it, it's one guy, I'm sure it's a whole team, mm-hmm. but one, uh, host, and the topics range from anything and everything. Yeah. I can't think of another topic right now, but okay. this was a good one. This was a cool <laughs> one. That's really cool. I yeah. did not know that. That's so awesome. Yeah. So yeah. now we can now we can throw that word around knowing what it means. Yeah, exactly. We can be knowledgeable idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Informed. What's the G.I. Joe? Oh, uh, knowing is half the battle. Thank you. Yeah. G.I. Joe. Where's knowledge? Is, knowledge is power. Where does that come from? Uh, wasn't that a, was that like a PSA from NBC back in the 90s? Probably. Was that a? That sounds about right. I don't know. I'll look it up at some point. <laughs> We should actually talk about the episode. Yeah, I mean, it's been 15 minutes. We can yeah, get into it finally. We can get into it. Yeah, but I mean, there is... Uh, is there red herring in this episode? Not really. No, I guess not. There's, yeah, there's nothing to distract you. You just... Yeah. You, you kind of don't think it's poison ivy, but then it, it obviously yeah, ends obviously up being it's going poison to be. ivy. Yeah, because there's, there's some giant creature, I'm going to call him Cactus Man, I don't mm-hmm. know what his actual name is, who's going around and attacking and poisoning rich single billionaires. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's redundant. Single billionaires. 
Yeah. <laughs> Rich Bachelors. Rich Bachelors. Thank you. That's a better way of putting it. Uh, and Batman is <clears throat> certain that it is Poison Ivy. Yeah. Uh, so he goes to Gordon. He's like, I don't care what you say. I don't care what the Arkham... Do- uh, Ivy's been let out. Yes. She's now married to a... The doctor who treated her at Arkham. Yes. Uh, definitely not a like Joker Harley Quinn story. No, absolutely not. I guess he he also teaches at the college yeah. university too. I guess because that's a it's a busy man plot point later. Yeah, because you can't you can't just lit you can't you know have a family with just Arkham money. No, you got to have that professor money, <laughs> the professor dollars too. Yeah, yeah. Because so Batman doesn't believe Gordon, but they go down to the suburbs, and so we get Batman in full costume. The most walking. awkward. Like it was so cringy to see him knock on the door and just have batman standing there yeah he never i don't know if he's ever entered through a door certainly never knocked on one yeah (laughs) i think there was a window right next to it and i I just imagined him like eyeing it yeah the whole time he's like can i just gordon Gordon, you you get the i'll 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 just come through i'll go around (laughs) you come from the ceiling i gotta i gotta pop in i can't (laughs) i gotta pop in pop out that's my thing gordon you know that's my thing yeah well plus how's he gonna slink away in the middle of daylight if he's standing next to the door right like where's he gonna go no it's the suburbs he's gonna he also just couch. parked his batmobile in the middle of the street i know i love that too like it it's so it's so weird i it, feel like this is like a sitcom opening it does feel that way it's not as weird as later when he goes back to the suburbs and it's by bright daylight at least this is like dusk so like the tone kind of works actually that whole section is like really beautifully animated mm-hmm. i thought um again i think I, I don't know if you know who animated this episode jasper Okay. Is the name of the company. Do they also do sideshow? I think so. I don't remember. Okay, because the animation looks like that kind of crisp. Um, mm-hmm. It actually reminds me of the way Darwin Cook draws. I know I've mentioned him before. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you remember his style, but it felt just a little bit sharper, a little bit different than the normal Batman animation. Like, oh, this. Yeah, this. One, I mean, especially compared to the next episode, this one was oh, yeah. really nice. Oh god, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Ivy's there, and she's like, "Look, I don't, I don't know who's doing this, but I can promise you, it's not me. Mm-hmm. I have a husband. He has two sons who I've kind of taken in as my own. We're we're married. We're a happy family. Like, I'm sorry this shit's happening, but it's not me. And you do want to believe her, yeah. You, I mean, obviously it's a TV show, and so characters can't ever evolve like that. No, but yeah, you want her to be reformed. You see her genuinely happy, and you want to yeah. see that reform." But in the back of your mind, you you know, you know it's just, you, she can't. No, she That's can't. That's not her. She's she's not allowed to yeah. be happy. So, I mean, but Batman leaves kind of still trying to figure it out. But you you can sense that even he's like, well, maybe she's telling the truth. Like, I think he also wants her to have reformed. I think we've mm-hmm. talked about this before that he does want to help his rose gallery. Yeah. But just most of them will never get out of their own way. And it's like, I mean, that's what we uh, we mentioned that at the end of last week's episode where the final line of the uh, when mm. he's talking to the new, yeah, the uh, new DA. attorney, yeah, uh, she's like, "I'm gonna keep fighting for Gotham that doesn't need Batman." He's like, "Well, me too." That's yeah, my that's whole the, goal. That's the whole point. And so he's like, "Oh, maybe, maybe one's off. Maybe one's like finally come around." But uh, so then we cut over to uh, to Dick, who's just horn dogging it up mm-hmm. at the college. Oh, hold on. two two other quick moments in that one yeah. scene. Uh, one, the the youngest kid is dressed like Stewie Griffin. I couldn't get that out of my head. Was he? Mm-hmm. Didn't even notice. Blue shirt, red overalls, like shortish hair. Oh damn it! Uh, really messed with me. And then they brought up the fact that she's infertile, which is oh. heavy shit for a kid show, yeah, right? Yeah, they brought up a lot of like heavy weird points. Yeah, because she's like, oh yeah, like I, I'm infertile because of like my immunity to toxins or whatever. Like, it, yeah, that's like the downside of it. You're like, oh, oh mm-hmm. god, yeah. Uh, but yeah, then we go to to Dick and Cindy. Is it Cindy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, voiced name. by... Oh, that's who that was. Okay. Yeah. Um, Megan Mullally. Thank you. Yeah. Who, uh, Ron Swanson's wife. Exactly. On Will and Grace. And then um, she's amazing as Tammy, too, in Parks and Rec. Yeah. Oh, my God. I fucking love her. Wait, are they actually married in Parks and Rec? That's his ex-wife. Okay, because they're real they're, husband yeah, and wife. Yeah, they're real husband and wife. Life, but in yeah. the show, he has two ex-wives both named Tammy. Oh, uh, that's great. And she's Tammy, too. <laughs> so, Perfect. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so because, you know, Dick has invited this girl over for, for studying. Yeah. For studying. But I love it. We've all been to college. We know what that means. Exactly. But then uh, Bruce calls. Cockblock Batman. Yeah, exactly. He's like, you need to get swings out. Swings in. And he's like, oh, I wasn't expecting your call tonight. And so the girl leaves in, in a huff. And you can tell that Batman and Bruce is, is kind of proud of Proud of Dick. He's like, yeah. Yeah. I, ra- I raised my ward, right? He also called him his ward, which is a little odd. It is a little bit weird. Yeah. But you can tell he's like, yeah, good on you, man. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Keep Just imagine how much easier it's going to be when you have all my money. All my money, I know. I mean, he's got that butt. So yeah. that's all he really needs. That's all he needs. Yeah. Um, so he, so they're on the phone. Uh, Dick is attacked. He gets by, cactused. Yes, by yeah. the, the giant green monster. Yeah. And Batman is certain now that it is... Uh, oh, no. First, he's in the car. Right? No. What happens first? Does he stalk Poison Ivy first? Let me, let me think about this. So, Robin... Or, no, excuse me. Dick gets kidnapped, and then Bruce shows up to the crime right. scene. Right, okay. Um, he's back in his blue, his brown suit, mm-hmm. but no tie this time. It's working for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is bat fashion with Chris and Cameron. <laughs> I like suits. What can I say? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so he goes there, and, yeah, that's when he says, like, oh, well, like... You know, this time it's a kidnapping because they can get more from me because they have my ward. They really have something That's right. yeah, to yeah. hold over me. So he's driving back to Wayne Manor, and then the green monster just happens to be in the back of the car. Oh, yeah, and attacks him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Says uh, he's holding Dick for ransom for $5 million. Mm-hmm. Bring it to the docks because where else would you bring it in the city? Yeah, nowhere. Um, so Batman you know, complies. He goes, he goes home, and he's like, all right, we need to figure this out. And he's still certain to poison Ivy. So he spends the day stalking her. Yeah. And one of my favorite, like, Batman, just because Kevin Conroy is so serious in his Batman voice, he's talking to Alfred on the headset. And he's like, what's she doing now? He's like, she's buying squash. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that's right. That's right, Batman. Yeah, he's like hanging Use out. that detective skill. Yeah, it's just like hanging out in a tree in broad daylight, just stalking a suburb. Yeah. Like, everyone has to see him, right? Yeah, it, it's... It's really weird to see him out during the day. Yeah. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. It's two sixties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he, he doesn't get any new evidence or I guess he's up on the roof and gets captured by some security vines. Ivy's put in place, but they have a conversation. She's like, sorry, like it's not me. I'm happy. It's still this not is my me. Life. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. And I think at that point he kind of does believe her. Um, but then, so of course, Bruce goes to the docks, mm-hmm. um, throws the money at the um cactus man yeah cactus man yeah uh who doesn't return dick he no. throws batman off the pier throws bruce off the pier Be- bruce off the pier and then batman reemerges. <laughs> yeah on his bat jet ski yep because everyone has a bat jet ski yeah completely new vehicle we hadn't seen yet that's true right? i forgot I about it no we haven't no, seen yeah, that before seen the bat jet ski and he crashes it immediately well as he does yeah yeah um so then you know he's basically rescue dicks and the two of them are off as now batman and robin mm-hmm. and uh batman mentions to him like oh yeah she's married to this professor and with these two boys and robin's like this Wait. was super confusing for me what the, this whole explanation of like oh yeah sorry I oh yeah so yeah but so batman says oh he's, she's married to a professor who you know from the university uh and they have two boys and robin's like wait what boys that's not right it's so that their names are are uh kelly and kelly and chris yeah I have it up. I think so. I have it up. Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me one second, Cameron. Chris and Kelly, yeah. Hey, we got it. <laughs> Chris and Kelly in the morning. Yeah. Um, These two kids go on to start. <laughs> oh, well, that, yeah, because it gets weird at this point now. Cause, uh, yeah. So it's like, okay, so it's the wrong kids, as we discovered. Like, mm-hmm. the, oh, and also the, the ex-wife has custody. The ex-wife has custody, and it's girls. Yes. Not boys. So they go back to Ivy's house and they find a trap door in her garden because mm-hmm. apparently like the, the tomatoes are plastic. Even poison ivy would have real tomatoes in a fake pot. Whatever doesn't yeah. matter. We I go, assumed it was just the the like casing was fake. No, they like hit the. It's like oh, oh, plastic. It's stupid. But they go down and like this is when it gets super this is so fucking weird. dark. And I actually this would have messed with me as a kid. I remember elements of this episode either watching the episode or maybe seeing a book or something connected with it. But like, I remember the image of like the, the babies and the plants and like Ivy kind of swinging in on the vines and talking to them. But yeah, they, they go into the lab and they discover that the babies are being grown as plants. Like she, she has these plant monsters, but she got them now. They actually look like Humans. real people, mm-hmm. but they're growing out of like Brussels sprouts. Yeah. And so it's like these babies crawl out of the plant with like a, vegetable umbilical cord sort of thing going on mm-hmm. maybe it's because i just saw alien covenant but it reminded me of that oh my my notes my notes in this <laughs> say plant clone question mark plant babies three question marks what the fuck is going on it's super 
super yeah. fucking creepy. Well, so they, so they first find um, the original professor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, is being his DNA, his sperm is being harvested. Well, that's exactly. Down there. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I makes a comment, it's like, oh yeah, he was really helpful to providing some raw materials. I'm yeah. Like, oh I'm, yeah. I even <laughs> okay. like, does she mean his sperm? <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly what she yeah. means. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they find him, and then the plant babies. Uh, can grow rapidly, but they don't live very long. Yeah, they live like a few days. Mm-hmm. And so they reach the the peak of their, or the end of their life cycle, they become the big green monster thing. Mm-hmm. So is that monster that we've been following the whole episode, is that the husband? Is it one of the kids? It's unclear. I have no idea. They never really explained uh, The, the way I kind of imagined it is it's a different person every time. Oh, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah, because they like die right after they become the big hulking yeah. cactus man thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so they're just dying off and she's essentially just constantly regrowing them. Um, I mean that, the, everything about that whole section is so fucking dark. Yeah. Like they are, she, cause she treats them like her children. Like that's how she actually sees them, mm-hmm. but she knows Cause that's her, fa- she sees that as her family. Yeah. And so she knows though that like every day or like every five days, her children are going to die and she's going to turn around and replace them. But, but she said she she sees it like a plant in bloom, I think is how she put I it. Yes. Where like yeah. plants, you know, only bloom for so long. Yeah. And that's how she sees the the children. It's I mean, maybe this is the only way she knows how to like actually love another person, right? Because she kinda hates people, mm-hmm. but she loves plants, and I guess she's found this like middle ground. Like a plant person. A plant person that kind of works for her. Yeah. But funny I I'll, I'll save this fact for the end, but funny enough, she does befriend a plant person at the end of this. Uh, but we'll save that. We'll oh, save okay. that little that little like, cliffhanger. What? <laughs> what? Um, so there's like six of these giant green guys now. They're chasing after Batman and Robin. Uh, and then he activates the sprinklers and they descend. I'd... He he put um I, weed I missed killer. what he put. Oh, okay. yeah, he put weed killer in the the sprinklers. Okay, I missed that part within the garden. Yeah. And okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. So you, uh, they kill the monsters. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, we got you, poison ivy. But wait. There's more. <laughs> she starts to disintegrate. Yeah. And then we find out that that poison ivy they've been following the whole time is also a plant clone. Yeah. Which is like, the villains are getting smarter. They are And that's smarter. kind of awesome. Yeah. Until we get to the next episode. I, We're going to save that. Yeah, I mean, I think what she's... It's her and the Riddler are the only ones who've kind of gotten away with it. Mm-hmm. Right? Clock King. Oh, that's true. Clock King, yeah. I will continue to support Clock King. Who's back next week. <gasps> yeah. Yay. Yep. Um, I mean, kind of Clayface, but... Kind of, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess Cliff has kind of got away with yeah. it, too. But he's, like, dead and just kind of comes back to life. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Uh, so, at the end, we see Ivy on an airplane with, like, a scrapbook of villain photos. Oh, yeah. And I, I want to... I'm curious who that photographer is that gets, like, those great shots of Harley and, and Poison Ivy together. Oh, I know. Because there's, like, four or five of them mid-action. I mean, it's they probably just, like, point a gun at some random passerby as they're committing yeah. their crimes like, it wouldn't surprise me if harley like kept a camera around yeah but it, it, i mean it is kind of a sweet moment because mm-hmm. it, it does show like all the thing it's 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 all things she loves right it was i forget it was harvey wasn't in there no no but it's yeah it's her and harley mm-hmm. and it's like a photo of the wedding the wedding with like the plant dude and like the kids and yeah it is kind of a sweet moment it is very sweet yeah like th- do you do you think this is like her sympathy episode? Like we got for yeah, Mr. Freeze, we got for Clayface. Like uh, I, I would compare it most to Sideshow, where okay. we see that she mm. wants to reform, but she still has to stick to her ways. Okay, because I, I was gonna say because in, I feel like I'm sympathetic with her up to the point where I discover like when I she's realize growing, she has this, she's growing this human in the yeah. lab. I'm like this went so dark, <clears> I can't <throat> sympathize with her anymore. So, yeah, I guess Strides is a good comparison because Croc's kind of the same. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's not that a guy. No, he's, he's an asshole. Yeah. Uh, but the cliffhanger I left you with. So they continue this story in the Batman Adventure comics. I don't know if you saw this little note. No, I missed this. <laughs> uh, where she takes the plane to the Louisiana bayous where she befriends Swamp Thing. Oh. And there's a whole kind of short story of her and Swamp Thing together. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't. I don't think Swamp Thing ever appears in the DCAU. I don't think so either. I think it was like him, Plastic Man, and the Blue Beetle were like the three characters they didn't have the rights to for some reason. Interesting. Yeah. But uh, there's... But there's like six other Plastic Man types. Oh, there's Elongated Man. Yeah. And Rubber Band Man. Oh, yeah. There's so many of them. And um, Uh, one more. 
But with the Swamp Thing thing, though, uh, looks like he's going to be a character in Harley and I, or Batman and Harley. The oh, cool, yeah. Then the trailer cool. that came out, they reference Alex Holland, Swamp mm-hmm. Thing. That's so, awesome. It does look really good. Go watch it. Yeah, yeah. Go I watch mean, I will. It. I, I will watch when it, I have time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How dare you have a really busy life? <laughs> God, it's, just, it's been really sucky this past week. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah. I don't really have any other trivia on this one, though. Uh yeah, that's that's kind of it for me. Yeah, I did like this episode a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, this was really good. It was a good a good ending to a long streak of good episodes. Yeah, because then oh, it gets it gets real shit. This but... might be one of my least favorite episodes of all time. Well, I have a note on that, but before we get there, of course, we have to mention our sponsor, which oh, yeah. this week is Cold Read Radio. Hey, yeah, we know that guy exactly. Yeah, from Matt and Natalie, which is a fantastic podcast where they get submissions for people and they read it live on the podcast. Completely cold, not having read it before. Mm-hmm. It's really fun, guys. Yeah, so. it's a lot. Of, and uh, one of the guys we did improv with, Justin Patterson. Oh, yeah. Uh, he has an episode. So oh, I that's cool. I think it's like episode five, I think. I think I listened to that one. It's, a good, it's good. Everyone yeah. should go listen to that. Yeah. Just go, that one. Just go that one, though. I'll put a link in for just that. Yeah. No, I won't. But uh, so here's the promo, though. Hey, hey, you should listen to Cold Read Radio because we read cold works. Well, we read well, we cold read works we read by you. Reads. Yes, we read cold reads by you, the uh, the writer. We want you to send in your work and the listener. Yeah, and the listener. We can do anything: pilots, yeah. screenplays, poems, short stories, sketches. Uh, sexual erotic fan fiction. All right, that's Matt's wish. It's going to happen. Um, but please submit them to submission at coldreadradio.com. That's submission, not, not plural. plural. At coldreadradio.com. And there was the promo. Yay, Matt. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so now we're on to the, the terrible trio. And that's a good name for this oh, episode. Oh, God, isn't it, though? I, I have a note. We'll wait to the end to get on to it. But okay. That it's, 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 it's horrible. It's so fucking bad. Um, Just like <clears throat> all of the frat boy stereotypes oh my God. kind of bound into a 20-minute episode. Yeah, because it, it opens and three super pretentious douchebags in animal masks. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, what? A fox, a shark, and a, a vulture. vulture yep. are committing a robbery. And Batman and Robin show up to to bungle it. And these guys... Oh, well, first they talk to the security officer that they're kind of oh, holding at gunpoint. Yeah. And he's like, how much do you make? And they kind of estimate that he makes like not but twenty one thousand a year. Yeah, yeah. And they have like sympathy for him. So they give well, him sort of. It's they like, give him money. Yeah. Or they they have pity on him. Yeah. Highly patronized sympathy. <laughs> yeah. They give him money and walk away, and you immediately know these guys are fucking assholes. Just such such douchebags. But they also are at least kind of well funded because they have like this awesome like getaway grapple launcher rig. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Batman and Robin show up to, to try and stop them. Love it too because Robin throws a Robin ring. I don't know if you caught that. I missed that. Yeah, because oh, no. Batman's going to throw a battering, and Rob's like, no, no, I got this. And he, so he throws it, and it hits the gun and pins it to the wall. That's and awesome. you can just see the shape of, like, an R. So good, it's not like, good for it's him. like a bird. It's, like, literally just an R that he throws. And... Good for him. That's what I, would, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a useless thing, actually, when you think about it. It's got one point on it. Yeah. I mean, if that, I mean, two points on the same side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. whatever. <laughs> it's got uh, that Robin ring. So... Robin gets blown up. Yeah, they, they run out onto the docks, and Robin goes after them. He's like, wait, no, don't do it. There's a bomb. Wait, yeah. So he blows up, breaks his arm, kind of. Yes, yeah, something like that. Batman goes in after him. Mm-hmm. And they escape. Yeah. And then we jump to Bruce with a gun. Bru- yeah, Bruce is... Uh, Bruce doing rich things with rich people. Yeah, clay shooting <clears throat> at some country club mm-hmm. with three raging douchebags. Oh, my. Like, the... I I can't even begin to explain the like superiority complex. You, you've seen Animal House, yeah, right? It's like the what's the um the pretentious? Beta ha- no, no, they're beta, they're Delta, but what's the pretentious? The Omegas? Oh, I think so. Oh God, I mean, I know I know my dad doesn't listen to this podcast, but if he did, he'd be yelling at me right now for not knowing <laughs> this, considering how many times I've watched that movie with him. Um, but like they make the pretentious guys from the Animal House fraternity yeah look like Just normal humble, charming oh my I, decent human beings these guys made me so angry yeah i they are so, it's not even just that it's really just the front uh the main guy uh who, warren yeah who's fox we know it's the same guys who mm-hmm. uh voiced by bill mummy uh, you probably don't know who that is though not a clue he was will robinson on the original lost in space show from the 60s oh, that's awesome yeah which you've probably never seen nope nope it's fine 
Uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's real. He has a huge superiority superiority complex. He's pretty racist. He's just a very very bad guy. Yeah. Um, and they chose their animals. There's two reasons. The first one is those are the three animals that they've all hunted because that's what they do when they're bored. They they hunt predators. I know. And tough. they even brought up like, well, what are you going to do when they go extinct? Like, I don't know. Our fun's going to be gone. We don't like. Like, they have no care for anything outside of themselves. Yeah. Very frustrating. Such dicks. Um, so we move on to the next scene where we meet Rebecca and her father. Rebecca, who looks very much like... Uh, do you remember the Hex Girls from Scooby-Doo? Oh, yeah. Looks very much like a Hex Girl. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's all I could think of the whole time. Yeah. Omega Theta Pi. <laughs> Thank you. Been looking it up this whole time. Because I, I had the um, the one from... Revenge of the Nerds in my head. Oh, Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Try Lambs. That's what I am. Uh. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, Hex or, Girls. Hex Girls, yeah. yeah. So Rebecca, um, she comes from a rich father, but mm-hmm. she still feels bad when she spends too much money. Oh, yeah. It's, I spent $5,000 on daddy's credit card. Yeah. For this dress. Yeah. You know, rich people things. Fucking these people. This is obviously an episode that everyone can relate to. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, so she goes to Sugar Daddy Warren. Mm-hmm. He writes her a $5,000 check. She's going to go put it back in her dad's bank account so he doesn't find out. And then they have the idea of, it's oh. how credit cards work. But... That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just go rob this guy. Yeah, why not? Because he's not going to be here this weekend. Yeah. We don't have anything else to do. We're bored. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they put on their helmets or masks again, go to the place. I, we see this in both episodes now. I, I I've tried to find this, but where what is the origin of the like hiding a safe behind a painting? Oh, that's a good question. Because that's been around know. forever. Yeah, I don't know if that was an actual thing. I feel like it. It's used so often. I feel like it has to be. I know. I mean, we might have to do a deep dive on this, like we did with the the red herring or the uh, girl tied up on a train track trope. Yeah. at some point. Um, here, why don't you keep narrating the episode? I'm going to okay. see if I can look this up. Um, so they break into the house. They find all the money. Uh, but they actually find out that the dad, Rebecca's dad, is still home. And they decide to be the good people that they are and just start beating the shit out of him. They, like, really rough him up. They hit him so hard. So way they, more than they have they, to. They all wear uh, rings. Delta rings. Delta yeah. rings. Um, and he hits him so hard that he leaves the the delta imprint on his face so i i had a note i'm like is that physically possible to do and i'm like you know who's probably figured this out the mythbusters oh have they they yeah they did a whole superhero episode and that one of the things they did was can you punch someone so hard that leaves a scar from the ring because that was something from the phantom and they busted it they basically decided that if you punch someone hard enough to leave an imprint from a ring you'd probably break their skull yeah which to be fair that's I think what happens to this guy, because somehow, like, a light kind of rustling puts him into a coma. At least it seems like it's a coma. Yeah. But then again, everyone goes in a coma in this show. Yeah. It's just, that's the, that's the like, 90s trope. It's one of the things, in the 90s, you fear quicksand and, and comas. comas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> My God, what if you wake up from a coma in a pit of quicksand? Then you, you're living the 90s nightmare. <laughs> uh, so they beat up this guy... Like, uh, as they're leaving, the uh, Warren grabs his lapel pin. I don't know why. For some yeah, reason, because they need a plot device. I mean, I guess because he's just so smug. He's like, oh, I'm just going to take this because I can. Yeah. Uh, so there, Batman comes, or is chasing them now. They they get down to the street. They escape the police, and Batman is now chasing them. Mm-hmm. Um, he almost gets them. He almost gets them, and they do. <clears throat> it's actually a smart thing because i feel like another movie has done this plot and not plot device but uh, this escape plan where they basically throw all the money they just stole in the air oh yeah in front of a, a crowded movie theater slash concert hall i didn't see what it was exactly Something like that yeah uh and everyone just runs in the middle of the street to grab the money and batman has to veer off the road and crash yeah it works it yeah. stops them so they, i mean they get away um and they're like okay we'll take some time off and we'll take the the girl what's her name rebecca off like up to the the ski place yeah. where there's snow. The mountains. What, what do rich people do? Yeah. We like to ski. Yeah. Well, we've already gone clay shooting. Um, yeah. I was surprised there wasn't a polo match in here somewhere. Maybe it would have been too much to animate the horses. Oh, yeah. So, probably, yeah probably that. Yes, yeah, so they go off. 
up to the snow and then of course rebecca finds the pin yeah he's he's trying to comfort rebecca because her dad is now in a coma and as he pulls out his pocket hanky uh the lapel pin falls out and she you know puts two and two together realizes that they are the ones stealing everyone's money and he has like warren has this horrible fake like emotional moment where he's like she's like why do you do this like because we're bored i'm like you rich piece of shit oh god i know he's just the worst villains and like yeah i'm like that's why rich kids do drugs like just stick to drugs and you'll be fine exactly that that whole scene i i never thought i'd see this before it's it's bad acting but it's animated yeah like everyone in that scene is acting horribly it's like the voice work and the animation is so bad i i it's astounding and the whole and the whole story is pretty bad the whole story is so stupid so then they they, they, well, they chloroform they, yeah, her. Yeah, they knock her out. I mean, to, to be fair, these guys would have chloroform. Of course. In their ch- chalet, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, so they put her in her car, and they push her off a cliff, and mm-hmm. she's, like, falling and falling and falling, and then, of course, she gets saved by the Batwing. I will give them credit. Fuck off, helicopter. I will give them credit that it's a cool shot when the Batwing, like, kind of comes up over, like, the cliff. Yeah. It's just, it's done from a cool angle. Yeah, and that like it it it's a very intimidating shot, yeah. which is immediately followed by the least intimidating shot you can have. Which is, oh, and it's like Batman <laughs> on the back glide. That oh. is the least intimidating thing you oh, can I... ever like. He has a cape that he can fly down on. We've seen that multiple times. Yeah, but he uses the glider now... and like slowly <laughs> chases. <laughs> what, what I love about this though is I have a note too. They finally use the backlighter the way we keep saying it should be used, yeah. which is in conjunction with the Batwing, and so they finally do. And here you are complaining about it. I am <laughs> because you see the shot and it's so powerful. He's like, "Oh shit, Batman found us!" Yeah, he shoots in the air and it's a cool like a full silhouette. Ejector sheet, yeah, yeah, like a beautiful silhouette. You see him in the moon, mm-hmm. and he like it's the bat shape, and then he like comes into frame. It's and like, he's just like casually gliding with his arm. You can't look intimidating or badass on a hang glider. No, you can't. It's just absolutely impossible. Yeah. <laughs> and luckily, he does just let go of it halfway through his descent. <clears throat> yeah, and kicks the guy in the face. Yeah. And then he he keeps chasing him, and eventually becomes a snowmobile chase. Yeah, because why not? Yeah, because of course there's a snowmobile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Batman, Russ, or I was just like. Tussles, wrestles, came out wrestles. He wrestles him. Yeah, he can wrestle he, he, someone's Jimmy, right? That's a thing. Yeah, sure. That sounds okay, bar- that sounds know. British. Yeah. Uh, so he beats up two of the three, and then he's left with Warren. Yeah. And Warren's Fox. like, "I'll pay you." Uh, he's like, "I'll give you a million dollars. Let me go." And I, in my, I, the audience knows the joke there, but like, obviously, the scene can't make it really that funny. No. Um, he's like, "I'll give you ten million. Think of how many batarangs you can get with ten million dollars." And then it, I just thought of, in the previous episode, he throws $5 million out like it's nothing. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does lose that. Yeah, I don't does think he, he ever... Back? I don't think so. Probably not. He doesn't need it. It's a rounding error. Yeah. <laughs> $2 trillion is a good rounding error. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. God, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, he's uh, he, he does a bad pun to end it, too. Oh. Uh, something like... Uh, you've, you're not like... Something with a chicken coop and a fox. Oh, yeah. You know I, how the I, joke goes. Wasn't really paying super close attention at this point. I was kind of zoned out. Yeah. But, yeah, so then he, um, yeah, Fox Warren is like, oh, like, you know, I'll, I'll go someplace where I'll be free. They'll never imprison me. And then, of course, the final shot is him getting wheeled into a prison cell mm-hmm. with some really, like, intimidating-looking guy. Where they needed to just, like, kill 30 extra seconds, so they just held on that shot it was, for way too long. It was weird, yeah. I mean, I get that they're going for, like, a poetic justice sort of thing here, but it's just, even that was flat. Yeah. It didn't, none of this, none of this worked at all. And, okay, so I, I have a question for you on this one. Okay. Is this the worst episode we've watched yet? It's pretty bad. I, mm. I still think Sewer King is the worst. Moon of the Wolf. Sorry, Moon of the Wolf. Moon of the Wolf. We, we, yeah, we, 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 we've had this conversation. Moon okay. The wolf, yeah. the only, top three. The top three, yeah. The only piece of trivia I found on this was that Bruce Tim considers this not only to be the worst episode of Batman <laughs> the Animated Series, he considers it the worst episode in the entirety of the DCAU. <laughs> we did it, guys. <laughs> we've made it to the worst. 
it's all uphill from here. The fear we had after Phantasm <laughs> has now come to come, come to true. life. Yeah, I mean this this is really bad. I mean it's definitely up there with Sewer King and Moon of the Wolf and The Forgotten. Like mm-hmm. the the episode that just the animation's bad, the story's stupid. There's just mm-hmm. dumb moments at the whole thing. The voice acting isn't very good. Although it does also have Hector Elizondo in it, who I generally that love. is true. Yeah. As the dad, yeah, who gets into a coma. <laughs> who has but, three lines? Yeah, it's it's all it's, it's all real shit though. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask. So you you come from a pretty nice neighborhood. I do. Yeah. I, do yeah. you know rich assholes like this? Did you go to school with rich assholes like this? Not this comically bad. Mm-hmm. Like I, I definitely grew up in a having grown up in like Silicon Valley in California in the nineties. Mm-hmm. It was a good time to be a kid um and the town i grew up in especially so i don't know anyone who's this bad though who's like so completely clueless and detached from the world Mm -hmm. um and actually the college i went to was almost like a continuation school from from high school (laughs) in terms of the kind of people i've met the super douchebag bro-y fratty type of people Mm -hmm. that get close to this but they're never like it's never this bad it's not as bad as this or like the uh um the Omegas, what were they from Animal House? Why did I close that window? God damn it! Uh, yeah, the Omegas. Yeah, <laughs> shit. I've no, I don't think I've ever met anyone quite this bad. I, I've met one person who's close. He's not this bad, but he's very close. Seriously, to this. yeah. Oh. Went to high school with him, and we never got along. Well, how could you get along with someone like this? Oh, he was the. I'm, I'm not going to drop his name because I know some of my high school friends listen to this, but oh. they probably know. Who they, I'm they, they know about. who you're we talking about. They though, know yeah. who this who this <laughs> asshole is. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, th- these are cartoonishly bad. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, we we do have to understand that we we use this excuse multiple times in season one, but we have to keep remembering this is still a kids show. It is, yeah. So we there, do need those those episodes that are just for kids every now and then. Yeah, is this a don't be a douchebag <clears throat> PSA? Is that what this is? Probably, yeah. Don't be rich. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> you're, if you're rich, you're going to get bored. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then you're going to turn to a life of crime. It's, I mean, there's... I think there's like this pl- I've seen that plot before. Isn't there like a movie that's has the same plot? What? Like the like people get... Rich kids get bored, so they start to... Uh, Bling oh, Ring. What? Bling Ring. Oh, the Bling Ring. Actually, I was actually thinking of the Thomas Crown Affair, now that I think oh. about it, which is actually an amazing movie. I've I haven't seen that one. I've never seen the original Steve McQueen one from the 60s, but I love the one from the 90s with Pierce Brosnan. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I am a huge James Bond fan, but one can almost argue what? that that's his, that's his best James Bond movie <laughs> is the Thomas Crown Affair. Oh, the yeah, score is so one. good, Bill Conti. Anyways, I'm, I digress. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad, though. Yeah. Have you seen Bling Ring? I haven't, no. Not missing out. No, it seems kind of insufferable. I mean, I watched it for Emma Watson. That's fair. That was, yeah. I, you know, I got what I needed out of it. Yeah, she's good even if everything else around her is bad. Right. But usually usually her movie choices are pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, this is, I'd say it's up there. That was, was one of the worst. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't have any other trivia on it. That really... I don't want to say any more trivia. I mean, I no, don't have I, any more I don't either, have anything else. I and um, I, I tried real quickly to see if i could find the origin of the safe behind the pain things and i, I couldn't from a basic Wikipedia yeah i search. couldn't do it either i have some downtime this week maybe i'll, I'll see if there I was can find a, it. a phrase there's a, a phrase that i found and it's like um like a covering canvas or something along it was it was a, a not illiterate what's it when they when the first two the alliteration first, yes yeah yeah it's, it's, it's something like that yeah it's something canvas. I, I know that. A covering canvas or something like that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let me see if I can track that down in the, the intervening week between our next episode. Yes. Uh, yes. But while we do that kind of research, we have to find ways to keep ourselves occupied. And that being the case... Look at that segue. I'm, oh, man. These 38 episodes are working for I know. you. Well, because I've realized that my go-to segue is... But until then, that's not a good fucking segue. So I'm <laughs> going to work on my segues. Um, that one was forced, but better than normal. That was normal. good. I, I liked that one. So, but Cameron, what have you been watching and or reading or oh, listening God, to to keep yourself occupied? Not much. It's been a, a real shitty week for you, me. Yeah, you've had a lot of shit going on. Um, <laughs> I I briefly, uh, I watched a couple episodes of Brave and the Bold again. Okay. Uh, which is, every time I rewatch it, I find so much appreciation for mm-hmm. it. Because it's, it's one of those shows where 
it's good on the surface level, but once you know kind of the background of these characters, because they go for the more obscure characters. Like yeah, in the first few episodes, it's Blue Beetle, uh, Wildcat. Mm-hmm. Um, like Metamorpho's in there. Right? Yeah, Metamorpho, and then um, fi- uh, Fire and... A Fire and Ice? Is it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the people that no one knows. Yeah. But it's kind of awesome. It's fun when they do that. Yeah. I also think it's weird that of all of the like C tier superheroes that Wildcat's the one that's popped up, I feel like in the most uh, DC television and movies recently. He, <clears throat> let me just think about this. Because where, where else has he been popping up? Uh, so he was in uh, Justice League and JLU. Or maybe just jail. He's probably just jail you. He, that's right. He is in jail you. Um, yeah. He's in Arrow. He trains Black Canary. Oh, he's like for like two episodes. And yeah. He just like disappeared from that season, didn't he? Yeah. He, he never did. put on the costume or anything nah. like that. But yeah, the, the Ted Grant. Ted Grant, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't there for a bit. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, yeah, and then Brave and the Bold. And I feel like something else that I'm not remembering. Um, Young Justice. Oh, that's right. He is in Young Justice. He's a great episode in Young Justice. Yeah. And he... A similar version of him pops up in an episode of Justice League, but it's it's remember the episode when they go to the, like the the town and it's the it's based off the Justice Society. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not exactly Alan Scott and Black Canary and Wildcat, but it's close to that. Mm-hmm. But then he actually appeared really as Wildcat in Jail You. Yeah, yeah. I like him. I've only <clears> seen him in a few things. Yeah, I I mean he's he's an odd character that I like that he's. That he's like the dad of all of the superheroes. Yeah. It's kind of awesome. Um, he has a great sequence in New Frontier. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did you haven't read still. <laughs> I'm gonna get to it, man. <laughs> I'm gonna I told you my my system. It hasn't been working recently. No. Where I just make my bookshelf look really unorganized, so I have to fix it. I have yeah. to read it so I can organize it. It's all right. You have had a lot going on. It's been a, it's been, a, it's been some rough yeah. rough times. And I'm still not convinced you can actually read. Um, nope. <laughs> so, Audiobooks. You don't need to if you're an artist. You just have to draw her. Exactly. <laughs> uh, have you been watching anything else other than Brave and the Bold? Not really. Did you go see any movies or anything? Not since Sunday. What did you go see on Sunday? No, I mean, we did our podcast on Sunday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean... Uh, Baywatch came out tonight and it's not doing great, but I'm probably no. gonna still see it. Yeah, you're probably still gonna go see it. Oh, I'm definitely gonna still go see it. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't. I'm 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 pretty dry this week. I don't oh, really okay. have any good like YouTube recommendations. Oh no. Well, no. less work for me. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I um I Are did you... go see Alien Covenant. How is it? It's okay. It's good. I didn't I didn't love it. Um. I think for the, kind of the same reasons I didn't like Prometheus that much, which is there's a lot of cool stuff going on. It looks great. Cool world building. But w- however they try and tie it into like the alien mythos just makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Because it's, it's after Prometheus but before Alien? It's 10 years after Prometheus. Prometheus is like 100 and something years before Alien. And mm-hmm. so as you recall, like the Alien opens with one of the um, – uh, I guess the term is like the space jockey, but the big U-shaped ship has crashed on the planet, and there's the uh, alien eggs inside of it. So mm-hmm. we don't know, and the original alien, we don't know anything about that ship or who they were or where it all came from. We just discover the egg. Um, this movie, like, so for, you've seen Prometheus, right? Mm-hmm. It ends, and you're like, how the fuck does this eventually lead to Alien? You would think this movie, like Covenant, would help bridge that. No, I it, didn't think that. Some it it kind of they can't does. they can't keep it, marketing this movie if they start to yeah. connect the two. It kind of does, but also kind of makes it worse in some ways. Um, and they, I mean, there's some interesting set pieces in there, but it just I don't know. I didn't I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I had to go see it because I'm about ready to like drive back up to NorCal this weekend and drive back down, and like all my podcasts that are teed up are all oh, about Alien Covenant. So like, right. I gotta gotta watch. I gotta it watch so it I can, so I can I can listen understand. to the Weekly Planet and to the spoiler special on Empire Magazine and stuff. There you go. So. So I watched that, and then uh, I've been watching Fargo season one. Okay, it's really good. I've only I've, have you seen the movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When was the last time? When did you watch it? Like when? <laughs> Two years ago. Okay, so you've seen it relatively recently. Mm-hmm. It's been a few years for me. I only vaguely remember details of it, and I I don't know if it's set in the same world or not. <clears throat> I think there's some bridging points, but I also don't want to look it up because I don't want anything spoiled for me. Right? I'm yeah. Yeah. You're old. Far back. The show, but it's really good. It's it's weird. So it's um, written by Noah Hawley, who did Legion. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I remember hearing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of in the back of my mind for a while. 
Yeah, and so I mean, I've been watching Hulu, and the way that FX does it is like the the current season isn't up on Hulu, but eventually the old seasons pop up on there. You can just watch them all, right? And it's all it's an anthology series, so they're separate enough that you can kind of <clears throat> jump in and jump out. But yeah, it's been pretty good. I'd recommend watching it. Nice. So yeah, um, I, oh, I do have I haven't watched them yet, but I okay. do have two things that I want to plug. No, they're not out yet. Okay. Uh, super excited for Glow. The the new oh, Netflix uh, yeah. Alison Breed Netflix series it's coming in two weeks yeah uh, and then I read that this morning for the people I've, I've probably said this before on the podcast but I fucking love Moana like so much oh, it's coming to Netflix it's coming to this Netflix. month yeah I'm very excited is. so everyone who hasn't seen it yet go you have no more excuses it's absolutely beautiful yeah yeah no and then uh, actually a friend of mine worked on Glow he's like one oh, of the awesome. one of the producers on it yeah and so like I was talking to him and he's he was like so so proud of it and like i saw the trailer i'm like oh i can see why this looks absolutely amazing yeah yeah get the binge that shit when it comes out yeah i'm so excited it's, it's in it's this month right mm-hmm. in june middle of june end of june i think second week of june like yeah. the 11th if that's a friday yeah i don't know something like that yeah who knows i don't know dates it's coming out the pipeline yeah but uh yeah excited for those things but i think thing that does it for us this yeah. week under an hour oh my god oh man it's that's a such, treat for you guys it's been such a long time <laughs> so but yeah, I think that wraps it up. Uh, the podcast itself, you can find us on the social medias at Tim Talk Pod. Uh, send us suggestions for things we should be watching, reading, listening to. Yeah, I need help. Yeah, Cameron needs help. For so many reasons. But so many reasons. So many, yeah. But uh, you can find us there. I'm at Lordifer <laughs> on all those same things. I'm at Cameron.Dexter yeah. on just Instagram. On just Instagram, yeah. No, no, no Twitter. I'm uh, going to put up some more artwork someday. Someday, right? Um, so, oh. Huh? Good, good episodes coming up here. We got Harlequinade and oh no, sorry, Catwalk. Wait, I thought I thought we had Time Out of Joint was up next week. Maybe it's not. Whatever, but we get a Harley episode next week at least. Yay! And maybe also Catwoman episode. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm, who knows? Who knows? You're just gonna have to tune in next week to find <laughs> out. I know. Poor bastards. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Bye. The Nerdist School Network. For class and show information, visit nerdistschool.com.